trying to keep us tied, but God told me to give you some keys to freedom. Some of you may not be tied up at this moment, but I do want to tell you that he's going to try to tie you up. So get the keys. Some of you may be tied up right now, and that's okay. Because God said, I have some keys that you can get loose. The, the, the greatest thing you can ever hear when you are incarcerated is the keys of the CO. Amen. And, and, and Pastor told me to share my testimony when, when I came to, to Jesus. I was not in a, a hip-hop Sunday. I, I was not even in a church setting, but, but I was incarcerated. I was in shackled from head to toe. I had an orange jumpsuit on. I was facing 25 years to life. And I called on Jesus and I heard the keys. I heard the keys. I heard the keys. Exactly. Keys. The great sound to hear the keys go in and the door go. Oh. I want to give you the keys. That if the enemy tries to tie you up, you can hear the doors go. <laughs> in our text brothers and sisters here you have the enemy trying to tie mighty man up. are you with me he's trying to tie these men up because they're turning the city upside down and I feel like this church is going to turn this city <laughs> I, I don't know why I feel that but but I really feel that. I'm not just saying that, but I feel this church. I, I drove up this street and I've seen several churches, but for some reason I feel this church is going to turn this city upside down. It, it's relevant. It, it, it's relevant to the times. It's bold enough to take a stand to have a hip hop. Sunday. That, that's actually wise of all your children are listening to hip hop. It's actually the wise to have a hip hop Sunday. But, but put Jesus, John 316 in the beat. It's foolish to have all your children listen to hip hop and you say, I don't listen to that stuff. <laughs> that's not wise. Jesus is wise. And he knows how to transition from generation to generation. The message stays the same, but he, 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 he knows how to come in the form of a skin. He, he knows how to come in the form of a lamb. And then he also knows how to come in the form of a man. Yes. Yes. I'm talking about generations. Yes. Yes. Here you have mighty man being tied up. And, and the book of Acts is recorded by the physician Luke, brothers and sisters. The book of Acts is actually a continuance of the gospel of Luke. It's all right if I teach him a bit, amen? Amen, this is uh, uh, the, the, the 11 o'clock service, amen? Amen, I know Pastor Barnes wants you fed, amen? Amen, and Luke is recording the book of Acts. The book of Acts is suggestive for what it is. It's a book of action. It's action. It's the action of the apostles, the, the, the regular, ordinary people like you and I that have given their life to Jesus and Jesus has filled them with the Holy Ghost. And because they're filled with the Holy Ghost, he is able to take the ordinary and do the extraordinary. He, he's able to take the people that were cast away, the common folk, and, and fill them. And because of them, dead men got up. Because of them, a disease has jumped out of people's body. Because of them, they preached that thousands came to Jesus. But most importantly, it is the actions of the Holy Ghost. The book of Acts is where we see the Holy Ghost take his residence in this earth when he, he set on each of them. And they all were filled in, in the upper room. He, it's the action of how the church was birthed. This is The church came out of uh, or let me say, being birthed in the book of Acts. Yes, Amen. Starting from 100 in the upper room to, to thousands and thousands of people. Yes. And now we hear uh, in San Francisco, the Eglisea, the church. Amen. It started here, brothers and sisters. Here you have Paul and Silas on a missionary journey. They're, 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 they're on mission. They're going from city to city. 
of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're, they're people of action. You, you do understand that the church is supposed to be people of action. Like Pastor said, this, your ministry is bigger than in these four walls sitting on a pew, brothers and sisters, like a statue. But, but you are supposed to move something. You are filled with the Holy Ghost, which is due to his power, meaning any situation, any, any place you wind up in, you have the power to blow it up. Yeah. They're, they're people of action and they're going from city to city telling people about Jesus. Yes. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? And, yes. and they go to one city, yes, Lord, in, 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 the, in the beginning of chapter 16, where, where they meet another man of God named Timothy. Now, now you do understand Timothy is the Yes, yeah, so he is the son of the ministry. He's the of Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul is the one that uh, discipled him. And here you see where Paul met Timothy, and he and he circumcised Timothy. He he cut the foreskins off Timothy to represent you are a child of promise. And and he told Timothy, you come with me also. That that is real evangelism when we can go to people and. And, and preach the gospel and circumcise them and say, no, now come with me. No, come with me. Come with me. Let me let me disciple you. Real discipleship, brothers and sisters, is when you take somebody by the hand and you show them how to live for God. But, but if you're going to teach me how to live for God, you also have to live for God. If you're going to get me free, you also have to be free. Yes, 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 yes. We can't have the blind leading the blind. It means we both fall into a ditch. So he meets Timothy. Luke joins him. And they're on a mission. Oh. And, 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 as they're, and because they're on this mission, the Bible tells us in, in, in verse 6, he says, So the churches were strengthened. In faith and increase in the numbers daily. I do want you to understand that the church is supposed to increase in numbers daily, not just on Wednesday Bible study, not just on Sunday, but the church is supposed to increase in numbers daily. How the church increased in numbers daily is that when we go out to our various worlds, we are supposed to tell people about Jesus. You do understand the church is not a building. The church is not an address. The, 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 the church is the ecclesia. It is a body of Christ. We, we technically have it wrong when we say we come to church because you really can't come to church because you are the church. And, and when you understand that you are the, the church, you understand that you have the power. Jesus does not wait in this place and say, I can't wait for us to have church again next Sunday. But when you step in, Jesus steps in because he will not dwell in a man, in a temple made by man's hands, but, but he will only dwell in what he made and he made you. He formed you. The church is strengthening, but there's a lot of other organizations that increase in numbers daily. What is a prison? Every day, a prison increases in numbers Daily, every day somebody is getting sentenced, brothers and sisters. Uh, another is a more. Every day somebody has to get embalmed. But but we are not uh, children of darkness. We are not children of death. But we are children of light. And and it's your job to come against the prisons when the prison is trying to snatch your young man. You say no. You cannot have him. Uh, in the name of Jesus. When the hospital tries to snatch one of your sisters, you, you are supposed to get oil and lay your hands on them and command them to be healed. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. They're on a mission. And the Bible tells us they're about to go into Asia. But the Holy Ghost tells them, wait. Don't go there. Stop right now. When I spread that, I said, wow. Paul and these men of God trusted in you, Lord. And the reason I can say they trusted in them, I said, Lord, you're directing their path. And your Bible says, trust in the Lord. 
with all thy heart. And leave not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. Paul, they're, they're on a mission to, to somewhere else, and, and the Bible tells them that the Holy Ghost told them, stop. I want to tell somebody, whatever you're doing, stop. <laughs> Are you with me? Just stop and walk away. And it says, while Paul are waiting, Paul gets a vision at night. And there's a young man screaming out for help in Macedonia. In the vision, Paul sees a, a young man said, help! I believe the Lord is going to raise this church up. I believe he raised me up and brought me out of jail. Because somewhere on some corner, there's a young man said, help! They're trying to kill me. Oh, they're trying to kill me. And it says, after Paul got that vision, him and his crew went down to Macedonia. If you want to see God use you mightily, be one he can call on when somebody needs help. That's right. As Christians, we are supposed to serve one another. Amen. We're supposed to love one another. Amen. Jesus said, you know my disciples by the love they show toward one another. He didn't say you know my disciples by, by them coming to church. You know my disciples because he can preach. You know my disciples because you can rap or sing. He said, you know my disciples by the love they show. What greater love is, is a man to lay down his life for for his fellow brother, but love is an action word. Love is a verb. You, you cannot say you love me and see a need that you can meet and do not help me. Right, yeah, that's right. I don't need friends like that. Now, it's one thing if you can't help me with my problem, but, but to know you have the answer to help me with my problem and just tell me God bless me. Jesus said, First, meet the need. First, give them some bread. Then tell them, God bless you. I'll never forget, and I got to share this. I'll never forget, I was, I was walking down San Pablo, seeing who I could witness to, and I ran into a man, and I, and I prayed with him. And after I finished praying with him, he said, now I need some money to get me something to eat. And I almost said, I almost said, well, brother, I don't. And the Lord, after I prayed with him, the Lord said, now you give him some money to get him something to eat. Amen. Amen. You got it. Well, what are you praying for, Lord? Blessing, and you got it in your pocket. Blessing. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Paul and Silas heard and seen a vision of somebody asking for help. So they immediately goes down to Macedonia to help. Help. And the Bible tells us when they get there, they, they, they end up gathering by the well with the woman. And the women are praying. It's good to be around people that pray. He, he says, surround yourself around people. And I'm going to tell you, surround yourself around people that will pray for you. Are you with me? The best thing you can ever do for me is not give me any money, but pray for me. If you really have a relationship with God, when you're on your knees, just, just say, Lord, help Pastor Mustafa. <laughs> are, are you with me, brothers and sisters? Because he can do way more than you can do anyway, brothers and sisters. He can meet needs that, that a physical person can't meet. Amen. And they run into a sister named Lydia. Come on now. And Lydia is a dealer of purple. For one, because the Bible mentioned her name, she was somebody. Because if you read the Bible, it really doesn't mention a lot of women's names. And because the Bible said that her name is Lydia, Lydia was somebody. And for one, because she was a dealer with purple, that indicated Lydia had some money too. Because purple was a royal color. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? When they got into the will and the purpose of God, God provided for them. God said, don't go that way. 
go this way. And when they got to the place that they were going, provision was.